Hey folks, Fred Horton here, and in this tutorial we're going to look at how to create an Ubuntu USB startup disk. And we're going to be using this to recover files off of a crashed hard drive. So, if you go to the Ubuntu website, you're going to need to get a couple files here. Here are the directions for how to do this, and there's directions for Windows, OS X, as well as Ubuntu. And from the Ubuntu website, you're going to need to download Ubuntu for your desktop. So you're going to need an ISO file. And you can select either the Ubuntu 12.10, which is the latest, or you can get the Ubuntu 12.04 at this point, which is the long-term support file. You're also going to need to go to the pendrivelinux.com site and download the uh, universal USB installer. So two files. One, the Ubuntu desktop ISO file, and two, the Pendrive Linux universal USB installer. So I'm going to get onto my desktop where I have downloaded both of those files. And then you're also going to need a USB drive that is at least two gigs in size. And when you format this drive, to use it as a startup disk, it's going to wipe out all the other files, so you need to make sure that you have a disk that you can use exclusively for this purpose. So mine is right here in the, attached in the E drive. So double click on the USB installer, agree, and then select which operating system you want to use as the startup. In my case it's the 12.10. Then click browse and select that ISO file click open. Then you'll need to select the drive where your USB is attached. In my case it's E. Now if you don't have your drive already formatted and it needs to be formatted to FAT32, I already have mine formatted. If you don't, you can simply check that box and it'll format it for you. And then if you wanted to set aside some space on that drive, if you had say a 4 to 8 gig USB drive, you might want to save some files on there. Um, you could set aside some space for that. Mine is only 2 gigs, so I'm going to leave that for now. So click Create, and then click Yes, and it's going to run through this uh, installation process, and this will take a few minutes here. Okay, so the installation is complete, and we can just close this out. And you can see now it has relabeled this USB drive to pen drive. And here's all the files that it installed, including the um, Ubuntu uh, installation file. So that's all there is to creating the USB startup disk. And the way you would use this now is you would plug the USB startup disk into a USB drive into the crashed laptop or desktop, whatever the case may be, and as the system is booting up, click or hold, hold down the F12 key. For most systems that will work. If you have um, something other than a Dell, which is very possible, you might have to do a little bit of research as to which key to press to give you the option to boot into the USB drive, but for most systems F12 will work. And once you do that, you'll boot into that USB drive and it will load up the, US, the Ubuntu uh, startup system. And I'll show you what that looks like in the second part of this tutorial. Okay, so once you start up your Ubuntu boot disk, you're going to be presented with two options. One to try Ubuntu and one to install Ubuntu. Now, for the purposes of our tutorial here, we're simulating a situation where your Windows operating system has crashed. You're trying to get on it to recover files. So what you'd want to do here is select Try Ubuntu and then it will boot up into the uh, full screen so that you can actually get onto the operating system. And I'll show you how to do that here in just one second. Okay, so once the Ubuntu startup disk has fully loaded, this is what your desktop is going to look like. And so I'm going to show you how to get onto the local hard drive that has crashed and then how to copy files from that to another disk. So you click on the home folder here 
and you'll see some default folders which we don't really care about for our purposes. Over here under, under devices, the local disk, that's going to be your local hard drive. That's going to be the one that has crashed. And mine's called local disk. Yours may have a different name, but whatever is first in this list should be your local hard drive, as I say, the one that's crashed. Now, I have a Kingston USB drive plugged into this as a second USB drive so that I can get onto that local disk and then have a place to copy my files, pictures, whatever I want to recover. And you're going to need to, to do the same. So you, you need at least two disks. You need one disk, the Ubuntu startup disk. And once that starts up, you'll be able to get onto the system. But you're going to need to attach a second flash drive or a second um, external hard drive that you can attach via a USB cable so that you'll have a place to recover all of your files. Now, you, you can't really, I mean, there's a way that you can recover the files to the startup disk, but that involves setting aside some persistent space when you're initially setting it up and um, I want to keep things simple here for our purposes. So I'm going to click on the local disk and I'm working with the Windows 7 operating system here and if you're working with Windows XP or some other system your layout is going to be a bit different and I, I trust that you know the layout of your operating system. If you don't you might need to do a little bit of research to figure out where your files will be but under Windows, usually if you can find users, you should see a folder under users with your username or name or however you have identified yourself on the system. So mine is just um, identified by my name. When I click on that, I can, I'll see all the files on my user folder. So we'll have a desktop documents, downloads, favorites. So the main places that your music as well and pictures, but the main places that people usually save things, a lot of people save stuff on their desktop. So if they, uh, if you click on that, that'll show you whatever was or is on, on the desktop. If you click on your documents, obviously you're going to see all your documents. Under downloads, any files that you have downloaded, um, a lot of people will keep software, the executable installation um, software under their downloads. And then under favorites, if you have a lot of um, favorites that, that you want to preserve, if you haven't backed those up, well then um, you might want to copy your favorites as well. And then obviously pictures, you can, you'll have all of your pictures there. So the process, no matter which folder or files you want to recover, the process is going to be the same. So depending upon how large your USB drive is or the external hard drive you have uh, will depend on how much you can copy at one time. This is just a little two gigabyte hard drive that will be useful just to exemplify the process here. So I'm going to open up my documents and then just pick a folder. Let's say the uh, training folder. If I right click on that, I can select copy and then go to that USB drive again right right click and paste and it will copy that folder and all of the contents there into um, that USB drive and I simply repeat that process for all the different files that I wanted to recover now if you know that you're going to be in a situation where you want to do this, obviously it would make better sense to have an external hard drive. You can pick up a, a cheap external hard drive for under $100 and you'll be able to use it for more than just this purpose. But with, with a little 2 gigabyte hard drive, I'm not going to be able to recover much. But again, the process will be the same. So simply click on users, find your username, and then find the files that you want to recover, right click, copy, go back to that USB drive, again right click and, and paste it there. And that is all there is to it really. And this is actually a little bit larger so it's going to
take a bit to copy that. But that's going to be the process that you're going to be repeating. Now, once you have recovered all of these files, you're still going to need to restore your operating system to that crashed hard drive. And if that hard drive is damaged, you may actually have to buy a new hard drive and have that installed if, if you don't know how to do it yourself. Or, worst case scenario, you might have to buy a new computer. The good news, though, is you will have saved a good chunk of change um, not having to hire somebody to get on your system and recover your files. And you'll have all those files so that when you do get a, a new hard drive or a restored system, you can simply plug in the flash drive or the external hard drive and then copy those files back into your user folder and, and just move on. So it's always a good idea to have a backup so that you don't run into this situation. But accidents do happen and it's nice to have a, a fallback plan in case you do find yourself in a situation where your hard drive is crashed and you need to get on and get access to what would otherwise be inaccessible um, files. So hopefully you found this helpful and you'll have some success recovering these your files either for yourself, your family, or if you work at, as a technical support person, um, you'll make a lot of people happy uh, being able to do this. Okay, thank you.